right. Uh, security profile. So uh, basically, a long wish has been to communicate basically security related information inside, well, not necessarily inside the but with your ASMOM data. And so that's what we're working on in the, the defects group. Uh, so yeah, this might confuse people why it's not called the security group, it's actually the defects group, which is the security is the first bit of defects that we're tackling. That's why the group is called defects. There's more things that we're working on, but security is the, is the first thing that we basically start tackling. Um, basically, we looked at four major use cases, which are like discovery and disclosure, severity, risk, and remediation. And so again, there's luckily a lot of standard models on how security information is, is, is being shared. So we're not reinventing the wheel, we're just trying to figure out, okay, these are kind of the models that people are used to. How can we translate them into an SBOM specification? And um, in a way that uh, um, is very powerful, but also on the same side where I was looking at a lot is how can we do it that it's not overbearing? So there are other specs that really, I won't name name, but I have, I have as input, I got one of the specs with 1,700 fields, and everybody wanted to have every field for every security use case in there, and, and then we said like, uh, no, let's first focus on the core stuff, uh, that we really, really, that everybody really, really wants to communicate, and then we'll see it on. And so these were the, mo the major um, four ones, and then we have also now uh, new things like uh, security assurances and in in integrity. So you can really link as well, but let's me go dive into all the things. So. Um, so we added uh, so-called ex external ref. Is everybody familiar with what I say in external ref? Uh, external ref is like an ex is basically an external reference. So from your SBOM, you can point to other stuff. So we added uh, 12, news of the, uh, 12 new ones of those. So you can now basically say like, oh, I did a security assessment. Here is the proof for that. Um, or I have, uh, I used uh, this internal security tool where I have the analysis. Here you have a link. The idea is basically that if you go to your security lifecycle and you have evidence in various systems, you can now put a link to it. And that's very useful if you have, for instance, have internal asbombs and you want to know, hey, did this pro pro product actually go to all of the stages before it went out of the door? Well, now you can keep all the evidence. So if somebody wants to review it prior to, re to release, you have everything. And then, this is quite common. A lot of companies make internal asbombs. Uh, for internal communication, and then they have the one that goes to the customer. So now you can track all of that information internally, and then you can exactly know like, oh, did we do this assessment? Do we have evidence for that? Did we do a risk assessment? And instead of having this in a separate Word document or having to have an entire system, uh, you can now just chuck it in your ASP. Um Then we have new uh, external identifiers. So now we have uh, for CVEs, and, and the other one is security other. So you can literally now say this is a CVE ID, and the security other, this is for, for instance, uh, GitHub, where you have GitHub has its own types of IDs for, for, for uh, security vulnerabilities. We now have that all. Then uh, we have the ability to I know, go in deeper on like how you can associate basically vulnerability with package, but uh, how that works. Uh, as, I said, as I said, we have uh, assessments. So the, the usual um, suspects is the new one, so EPSS. I don't know how much people are familiar with the security world, but EPSS is one of those ones where you can indicate like how much it's likely, the likelihood of being exploited, uh, but also uh, VEX. So VEX, uh, we'll go into it later. This is a way how you can communicate like, yes, if, yes, I have this open source component. Yes, we know there's a vulnerability before the threat, but actually we have maybe we configured this component that you can actually not exploit this vulnerability because simply we reconfigured it, it so it's basically behind our firewall. So it's not, it's not real. Um, so yeah, let me just quickly, and Rose already gave a quick intro to profile, but let's make it a little bit more kind of concrete. So you have, again, you have the core profile, and then you have the software profile. In just to be honest, the security profile, the first step we're focusing on is security information for software, but we designed the spec that it can also be extended to hardware. As the hardware profile comes online, we should also be able to, to, to cover it. So yeah, we started with a simple, like an, a simple application. We have some uh, dependencies, and now we can do. Oop, let me go next. We can add some extra bits to it. So now you see the in kind of visual the security profile. So now we can add the the CVEs. So for people not familiar with CVEs, it's kind of the the standard way from the uh, in, to indicate like what an identifier for a vulnerability. But as said, you can also do it for. 
uh, for things that do not have a CDE. So if you have your in your company your own security database where you assign your own identifiers to vulnerabilities before a CDE is filed, um, or maybe it's only used internally, uh, and then you can now do that. You can assign your own identifiers and, and you will be able to do that. So how does this kind of work? Well, so basically you will have a, a software artifact and a software artifact that can be a, a package, it can be a file, and it, it can even be a snippet. So you can even say like this snippet has a, has a vulnerability. And so you can e really point to it. And then you basically can say uh, has an associated vulnerability and then we have a new element that we introduce is uh, for a vulnerability. And similar wise, you can also say like, hey, I have a vulnerability and actually I have an assessment. So the vulnerability itself contains relatively few information um, because we build things around it. So what do we call assessments? So for instance, you can say, okay, I have a CVS P2 uh, score for this assessment. I have an EPSS uh, rating uh, for this assessment. Or I can say like, oh, it's in, in, um, I know it's in a known exploit catalog. So all of these is what we call assessments. These are kind of like opinions about this vulnerability that different people have. So it's also uh, possible, for instance, that Rose and I, we differ about the, the likelihood of exploitation or the risk assessment from this vulnerability. So that's now also possible. It's not just one number. You can have different view, people expressing different views. So you can maybe say like, oh, from my security tool provider, this thing uh, has a critical, but after we reviewed it the way how we use it, it's actually no longer a critical, it's actually a medium. And so you can now n nicely encode that in the, in the new stack. So this is kind of how, it, uh, uh, how the assessment looks like. There is like the relationship. So again, here we have the, the CVE and then we have the assessment. And it said now we can point out it's actually a, a too many relationship. And it's, it's kind of my life so a little bit complicated because there's multiple things. So we have the vulnerability, we have the product, and then we have the dependency, like the open source dependency likely that's inside of this product. So it's actually, it's a, it's a triple relationship basically that you have. So it's not normally, a, I know in SPX we have like usually a one, like a one point to one relation. This is actually a triple relationship because if you say like, hey, we have a vulnerability, we have a product, and then we have something in the product that is actually vulnerable. That's how we basically make the assessment on. So that's why it's a, maybe a little bit complicated. And um, you can also now do VEX. As I said, VEX is a way where you can say like, hey, what is the, how do we think this vulnerability, what's the impact on it? And so you now can basically say like, yeah, I have a vulnerability and I say like, oh, I, I'm investigating whether this uh, vulnerability has an, has an actually an impact on my, uh, my package. Uh, but there are more, I said the VEX, um, how many people in the room, just to like show how familiar with the VEX? A uh, few, but not all. So basically you can, in, in VEX, it's, well, there are actually multiple VEX standards. <laughs> um, it's a little bit complicated, but there are three with SPDX, technically it will be four. But basically the way how we implemented uh, VEX in SPDX, it's basically, it's compatible with, with all of the other uh, VEX standards. We, we basically maintain the core um, in information. So you can really say like, hey, I first uh, send out the first uh, information and say like, oh, I'm investigating. Then you can say like, oh, hang on, uh, we've investigated, I'm gonna amend it. To basically say like, oh, I have a new thing. So it's like, yes, actually affects myself. So you can do basically update your relationships over time as it goes internally to your security process to basically figure out like, what is the impact of it? So this allows you to directly communicate, for instance, with all of your customers from like, yes, we're doing this. And so this has a lot of benefits because now I know with some companies this conversation now goes over email. Uh, the view is to basically make this digital and then you can basically, the same point where maybe you have a REST API where you distribute your SBOMs and then your customers, if there's a big say new log4j, they can just go to the REST API and they can also get all of the VEX information. So instead of each customer having to go to your dedicated website for log4j, the idea is we can make this all machine readable and you can nicely communicate this uh, in, in a digital format instead of having all of your account managers communicate to all of the customers like no, no, yes, no, and it, yeah, let's do things digitally instead of things manual. Um, first, we always are looking for your feedback. As I said, security is not easy. Uh, there are always things uh, that we case them out. We're now basically really working on modeling real world cases and then trying to model out like how does this work, how does this look like. 
we did make some omissions just for the first 3.0 to keep things simpler and that we passed on to 3.1. So we haven't modeled everything. We do know that we are, we think we can model them in 3.1. It's just basically we had at some point out of a cutoff point. <laughs> basically, this is 3.0, <laughs> this is 3.1. Um, so yeah, you can join our meetings. Uh, our meetings are every Wednesday uh, for the Europeans is at 8 p.m. Um, for Gary, you know the US times, all the translation, it's like 10, 11 a.m. West Coast. West Coast. Um, and so you can also submit uh, uh, issues to our, our security model. So I should now be nice within my 10 minutes.